Welcome to this conference on land policy in Africa. Uh, once again, my name is Arnold Quizera. I'll be your host today. Uh, and I hope we are going uh, to pick and take away a few things from this policy. I was just, uh, the first two videos that played there, and uh, I took away something regarding equity, equality, and how the land tenure system uh, on the continent uh, needs uh, to be amplified and moved faster to enable equity and equality if we are to achieve uh, some of the targets that we have set uh, ourselves out for. Uh, there's the AU Agenda 2063, and I think that's going to be a big part of our conversation. Thank you for making the time, and thank you for being with us in Rwanda's capital, Kigali, uh, for this meeting. It's always lovely uh, to have you meet in Kigali. Uh, our first remarks coming in from... Uh, allow me to introduce uh, Ms. Mama Keita, the Director of Sub-Regional Office for East, Eastern Africa at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Just a quick reminder, as she makes uh, her way to the podium to give her speech, uh, you can give it from your seat if you want to, or you could come to the podium. Uh, a reminder to our guests that uh, you can, there's uh, multilingual translations, so if you want to listen to this in French, please, uh, you can use uh, uh, the translation devices uh, that are on your seats. Mr. Patrick Carrera, representing Honorable Minister Dr. Jean d'Arc, Mujawa Maria, Minister of Environment of the Republic of Rwanda. Uh, uh, Son Excellence, Monsieur Sakombi Molendo, Ministre des Affaires Forestières de la République Démocratique du Congo. Her Excellency, Ambassador Joseph Asako, Commissioner Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy and Sustainable Development, the African Union Commission. Excellency Mrs. Aisa Touré Sar, Resident Representative, African Development Bank. Excellency Dr. Thomas Kurz, Ambassador of Germany to the Republic of Rwanda. Dear participants here in Kigali and also joining virtually. All protocol duly observed. Good morning and welcome to this conference on behalf of Mrs. Vera Songwe, United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the, of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Welcome to the fourth conference on land policy in Africa. I would like to begin my remarks by expressing my gratitude to the government of Rwanda for co-hosting this conference. I also want to recognize the leadership of the African Union Commission and partnership of the African Development Bank for our 15-year-old joint partnership aimed at supporting our member states to improve land governance. The biennial conference on land policy is a key output to our joint partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's conference is being held under the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to challenge humanity in fundamental ways, amplifying in the process our, glo our global interconnectedness and interdependence. No country or continent can rely on its own knowledge, tools, and resources to tackle challenges like COVID-19. Similarly, we all need one another to share knowledge, experiences, and leverage resources towards land governance reforms to transform our countries and continents. We established the Conference on Land Policy in Africa in 2014, and I'm very happy to note that it is now a major platform for experience sharing and learning in support of the effective implementation of the African Union agenda on land from a wide range of perspectives. The theme of the conference echoes the decision of the African Union that 2020 be the year of arts, culture, heritage, 
Furthermore, at the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, the year 2020 was declared the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the creative economy is among the most rapidly growing sectors of the world economy, generating over 30 million jobs worldwide and employing more young people under 30 years old than any other sector. Through cultural and creative industries, income can be generated, job created, trade opportunities increased, and social harmony enhanced through music, film, software, advertising, entertainment, architecture, virtual arts, publishing, and tourism. All these opportunities can be greatly facilitated by good land governance that facilitates sustainable management and use of forests, landscapes, rivers, and other ecological resources for economic and social benefit for culture and creative industries. There is no doubt that land is the greatest heritage for Africa and Africans, whose value for humanity transcends from one generation to the next. By developing effective governance policies and practices to secure uh, this heritage, we will harness its potential for economic, social, and environmental, environmental transformation and contribute to eliminating poverty and hunger through increased productivity, promoting sustainable agriculture by harnessing technology, innovation, and indigenous knowledge systems, advancing gender equality and women empowerment, and promoting people-centered economic growth. The development and implementation of land policies requires knowledge of the issues of all levels of society. There is a need for targeted data and collection and information on land claims and management to promote responsible investments while ensuring access to productive resources, including fertilizers, seeds, storage, facilities, among others. Of utmost importance is harnessing good practices to secure land rights for women and for youth, and to benefit from those opportunities. Here, I want to commend the government of Rwanda for great efforts in, secu in securing land for women and also protecting landscapes for wildlife that form the basis for a thriving tourism sector. Sharing of such knowledge among countries is critical, yet it is often hindered by the way the knowledge is packaged and disseminated. We just attended a demonstration where Rwanda is now using blockchain technology to secure land uh, documents, and this is really amazing, and we really hope that it's going to be replicated in other African countries. Ladies and gentlemen, working with artists and the creative sector, technical information can be simplified and made more accessible to our communities. Land governance information can be rendered in music, film, visual arts, short stories and animation, and presented in different African languages for better reach. Equally, in developing land policies, we have a responsibility to secure spaces that have significance for community, be it heritage or scarce sites with spiritual importance. They may also have historical or cultural relevance. The recognition of lands as heritage with political, economic, social, and environmental and spiritual significance provides an opportunity for inclusive policies that protect diverse interests. It is also important to examine critically large-scale and land-based investments, most of which sits on customary land to support more equitable distribution of benefit and risk. 
This way, we ensure private sector engagement can be economically viable, equitable, and sustainable, reducing land-based conflict and safeguarding the environment. This, ladies and gentlemen, require us to intensify relevant research and analysis of data that guide interventions. This conference is a good opportunity to reflect on and reaffirm our commitment to the aspiration of the African Union agenda for land, our contribution to Agenda 2063. We are witnessing steady progress in the integration of land governance frameworks in continental, regional, and national development strategies and agricultural investment plans. Academic institutions are reforming their land governance curricula to incorporate the demand of industry and inject new dynamics driven by research and innovation. The continent is also praying more, paying more attention to indigenous knowledge systems to address food deficits and mitigate climate change. Traditional institutions and alternative dispute resolution mechanisms are being utilized alongside statutory law to address disputes. But more still needs to be done. As a tripartite partner with the African Union Commission and the African Development Bank, the ECA is committed to implementing the African Union land agenda to the Africa Land Policy Center and by mainstreaming land governance issues into program of the Economic Commission for Africa. We express our deep appreciation to our part, the, uh, development partners, especially the government of Germany, who, with technical assistance from GIZ, have provided immense support in the auspices of the strengthening ad advisory capacities for land governance in Africa program. One of the key outputs of this flagship program, named the Network of Excellence on Land Governance in Africa, which has seen universities review curricula and develop training programs to equip land professionals with skills needed to improve land governments and management in Africa. I urge more development partners to join with us to ensure the African Union aspirations are achieved as we progress toward 2063. Let me close by urging all participants to take advantage of the invaluable platform provided by the Conference on Land Policy in Africa to share knowledge and experiences, build alliances and networks to amplify our collective impact. I thank you very much for your attention. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Aisa Sarature, the country manager for the African Development Bank. The Commissioner, Agriculture and Rural Economy, Blue Economy, and a Sustainable Environment at the African Union Commission, Her Excellency, Madame Josepha Leonard Correa Sajo, Monsieur Aimé Sakombi Molendo, Ministre des Affaires Sociales de la République Démocratique du Congo, Mr. Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary at the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources of the Republic of Rwanda, the Director of the Sub-Regional Office for East Africa of UNECA, Madame Mama Keita, His Excellency Thomas Kirk, Ambassador of Germany in Rwanda, colleagues from African Development Bank, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Muramotse, good morning, bonjour. I'm pleased to provide remarks on the opening of the fourth All-African Comprehensive Land Policy Conference, a conference that has demonstrated its role as a convening policy, advocacy, and lesson-sharing platform towards the implementation of the African Union Land Declaration. It's, it is also a conference in which African Union members, countries who are also African Development Bank member countries, 
come not only to report on their respective country progress of the implementation of the land declaration, but also to take stock as well as benchmark respective country performance, challenges, and future identi and further identify area for capacity building and research. The topic for this fourth conference, land governance for safeguarding art, culture, and heritage towards the Africa we want is well fitted towards examining land from a cultural, art, and a heritage lens. Currently, there is an ongoing debate about traditional land tenure as a bottleneck to agricultural modernization, gender empowerment, inclusive development, and creation of sustainable path to vibrant rural economies. It's my considered opinion that by the end of this conference, we should have known how to help small scale farmers derive more economic gains from their lands. Given the theme of the conference and its recognition of African Union Commission declaration of the year 2021 as Year of Agri African Culture, Arts and Fashion, I'll try to restrict my remark to that as opposed to talking about matters of agriculture and land or the challenges of promoting agricultural mechanism, mechanization in the continent. I'm aware that technical experts continental-wide will, over the next three days, delve into that subject in relation to its impact on culture. In that respect, it's important to keep in mind as you discuss the following points. Both religions and African culture links the creation of humanity to soil and to land the soil being the substance for which, from which humanity was created. We therefore find ourselves connected to it. Any denial, therefore, or restriction to anyone accessing or using it amounts to violating uh, the essence of our own creation. Looking at the land, therefore, from both those both perspectives, context cultural context, we all come to an agreement that it has shaped the emergence, development, and growth of nations, and as such, has the political, economic, social, and cultural facets associated to it. From the two perspectives, it is of significant importance to us to examine the modalities for everyone to have equal access, use, and control of it. Control of lands in developing and middle-income countries still portrays complex interplay economic, social, cultural, and political power. In many African countries and beyond, land is culturally tied to traditional practices. The centrality of land to African economies has therefore has to be therefore carefully handled and examined in respect to such traditional uh, culture and heritage. As we discuss this topic today and the days to come, there is a need to tap into such indigenous knowledge, cultural knowledge, to help better inform policy making and even understand why uh, some agricultural development project and program have a slow uptake. Allow me to draw examples for, from the Karamajong pastoral people of Uganda and the Himba's people of Namibia. We all live in semi-desert lands. Severe uh, droughts and food insecurity is a common occurrence in both communities. And yet, studies have strongly demonstrated and established a strong attachment of these communities to their land, culture, and fashion. At worst time of drought and other calamities, these communities practice the culture of evoking rain through their ancestors. And likewise, when they have good harvests, they will also thank those ancestors. Therefore, 
this is an ex these are examples that we need to take into, consider uh, into consideration in land policies. Who should respect traditional communities in such situation? A joint community land title should be given to them in order to prevent their lands, culture, and identities. The African Development Bank and the African Land Policy Centers have been involved in helping to build the capacity of African traditional authorities to see their roles beside others as custodians of the land for their people and for the future. Communities leaders are uniting force and switched over communities' resources and assets, including lands. Our concern today is on equitable access, use, and ownership by and for all the community's members, especially when it comes to women and youth. Secondly, has inclusive, consultative, free prior, uh, and informed concern, consent sorry, should be derived from the entire community, inclusive again of women and youth, in the case of intended for an investment in the land uh, or in the resources therein. We have gone a long way with our traditional authorities and institutions. In the last land conference in 2019, our community leaders in their respective capacities signed a declaration to equitably share lands with women and youth and to recognize women in particular to free access to land and to ownership of land. Our traditional authorities who are with us today will attest to this and may also report uh, the extent to which that signed declaration has been implemented in their respective traditional area of jurisdiction. Poverty eradication and sustainable inclusive development should unveil every citizen and equal access, control, ownership of land, land being a key input, as my sister Mama said, to food production and a major soft a source of capital to the poor. The importance of land and its unequal distribution between women and men needs to be given more greater attention in any program on land reform and women's land rights in Africa. We at the African Development Bank, we are very resolute to this in our overall policies, strategies, programming, and project implementation and designs. We shall furthermore continue to ensure that all member countries integrate land in the center of their national development and policy frameworks. Keep advocating for the development of poor, poor land policy making processes, continue building the capacity of national land institutions and support inclusive land tenure rights in the delivery of the, our member countries' strategy and sustainable economic frame, uh, transformation frameworks. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, African Development Bank and the African Union Land Declaration, we nurture and foster our partnership with UNECA and African Union Commission through strengthening our tripartite initiative, the African Land Policy Center. Thank you for listening to me. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I think you saw a special guest join us a little bit later. Uh, it's uh, the Land Affairs Minister for the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo. He will be uh, as well speaking to us uh, shortly. Uh, for now, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, His Excellency Dr. Thomas Kurtz, uh, the German Ambassador to Rwanda. Guten Morgen. Your Excellency Ambassador Joseph Sacco, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Environment of the African Union Commission. Honorable Sakombi Molendo, Minister of Land Affairs, Democratic Republic of Congo. Ms. Mama Keita, Director, Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Mrs. Aisa Tarturi, Country Manager, African Development Bank, and last not least, our host, the Government of Rwanda, represented by Mr. Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Environment. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for the opportunity to briefly address this distinguished audience. Germany is honored to be, <clears throat> to be a longstanding partner of the African Union in enhancing land governance. And we're honored to be part of this important biannual conference. Land is at the center of socioeconomic development in Africa, as Africa hosts more than half of the world's available arable and yet uncultivated land, which, if used sustainably, can provide the con can improve the continent's economic growth. Linked to land are agriculture, food systems, and land investments, which are again crucial to enhance income and reduce poverty rates. Good land governance is therefore critical to achieving the African Union's Agenda 2063 and the UN SDGs. Unfortunately, weak land governance and insecure land rights are still significant development challenges. In 2006, the African Union Commission and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and the African Development Bank acknowledged the import importance of land governance by establishing the Land Policy Initiative and most recently transforming its secretariat into the African Policy Center, ALPC. Germany, through GIZ, has been supporting the ALPC's capacity development program over the past six years through our joint program, Strengthening Capacities for Land Governance in Africa, SLGA. A key flagship of the SLGA is the Network of Excellence on Land Governance in Africa, uh, NELGA. NELGA was established to strengthen capacities of universities and other centers of excellence for evidence-based land policy and institutional reforms. Since 2016, the LPC through NELGA has worked on closing land governance capacity gaps. This includes, for example, the review of curricula, development and implementation of master PhD programs, and short-term courses. Advanced research fellowships, scholarships, and training of over a thousand recipients across Africa, both for established land governance experts and young policymakers. With this, our joint program, LSGA, supports the implementation of the AU Declaration on Land by integrating land policy into country strategies while monitoring its implementation, mainstreaming innovative approaches, and developing, developing scalable approaches. Let me share a few key messages with you. Effective land governance will guarantee survival, protection, and development for all, especially women and marginalized groups who depend on land for survival. Platforms such as this conference should therefore provide a convergence point for policymaking and research, research by, for example, reviewing best practices and co-designing co land systems. Land also continues to have significant traditional and historical implication for Africa's peoples. It is therefore timely that this conference, in line with the AU's declaration of 2021 as the year of arts, culture, and heritage is looking at the land space through a customs and creative lens. As these structures can provide resilient factors in influencing the land governance space. Let me conclude. Our common goal is to ensure the sustainable development of the continent and empowerment of its people. Through SLGA, Germany assists in facilitating dialogue, networking, knowledge sharing, and awareness raising to address challenges and improve land utilization and development in Africa. We are committed to continue supporting land as a priority policy concern because it is key to the economic transformation of Africa. 
Let me commend the organization of this conference as a dialogue platform for knowledge and experience sharing, which brings all land governance st stakeholders together to cooperate, and to, to cooperate and learn from each other. We're honored to continue partnering with the AUC, UNECA, AFDB, and Rwanda in this regard in order to achieve a peaceful and prosperous Africa. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce our next uh, speaker, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Joseph uh, Sacco, the Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy, and Sustainable Environment at the Africa Union Commission. Honorable Mr. Pra uh, Patrick Carrera, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Environment of the Republic of uh, Rwanda, representing Her Excellency Honorable Jean d'Arc, Minister of Environment of the Republic of uh, Rwanda. Uh, Excellency Mr. Aimé Sakombi, uh, Minister of Land Affairs of the RDC, Merci beaucoup, Excellence, pour votre présence effective dans nos, dans, dans nos délibérations. Madame Aisha, Aisha Touré, uh, African Development Bank uh, Country Manager in the Republic of Rwanda. Uh, Madame uh, Mama Keita, Director Sub-Regional uh, Office of Eastern Africa, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Excellency Ambassador Thomas Kruz, the German Ambassador to Rwanda, thank you for your support and your presence. Excellencies, representatives of various uh, governments, the International Partners Organization present here, all protocol duly observed. On behalf of the African Union Commission, it it gives me great pleasure to address this biannual conference on land policy for Africa. Warm greetings from the chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Musa Faki Mohamed. Let me begin by thanking the government of Rwanda for hosting this important conference in this beautiful city of Kigali, despite the fact that we have adopted a hybrid approach for both virtual and physical contact, especially for the opening and the closing ceremony due to the COVID-19 pandemic that is still ravaging our continent. I sincerely appreciate all the participants for finding time to attend this event despite the COVID-19 pandemic while we sympathize with family that have lost their loved ones due to the pandemic since last year, 2020, and enjoy, enjoy all, the, all of you to continue to stay safe by observing all the COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical protocol, during those of, uh, including those of you that have been fully vaccinated until we are able to reach herb humanity, uh, human, humanities. Land is a very emotive uh, issue in Africa, as my predecessor have rightly you know, uh, uh, presented here during their statement. It no doubt lies at the heart of social, political, and economic life in most of Africa, where agriculture, natural resources, and other land-based activities are fundamental to livelihood, food security, income, and employment. Land is also continues to have major historical and spiritual significance for African, African people. At one time, land seemed an almost inexhaustible 
access in Africa, but population growth and market development are creating mounting pressure and competition for land resources, especially close to town and cities and in productive high value areas. Competition for land as a result of climate change is a triggering and exacerbating wider conflicts as we are, we are witnessing in the Sahel region. In Southern Africa, the unresolved historical legacy of colonial land alienation underlies the risk of social and political conflicts. In recent years, a surge in the purchase of African land for foreign companies and government to grow food and other crop for export has also set alarm bells ringing or ringing on and off the continent. The management of land is thus a core issue for African governments today. It is dynamic and challenging context. In this dynamic and challenging context, the Conference on Land Policy in Africa is organized biannually, uh, biannually by the African Land Policy Center a joint initiative of the African Union Commission, the United Nations Economic Commission, and the African Development Bank. It brings together a range of uh, interest, uh, interest uh, groups, including African policymakers, academ academics, civil society representative, as well as rep representative of uh, private sector, local authorities, the international agency to debate the way ahead for land policy in Africa. This is a very good platform where we can really share lessons, good lessons, the way we just saw it from, uh, this, uh, from uh, uh, the Republic of Rwanda. So it is a very good opportunity to know what is happening. We are many, we are 55 countries, we need to interact more because there are a lot of good news that is happening in our continent. This year's conference, the fourth in the series, is being held under the theme Land Governance and Subguarding Heart, Culture and Heritage Towards the African We Want, in line with the African Union Declaration of uh, 2021 as the Year of Heart culture and heritage levers for building the African we want, which is, uh, uh, is, uh, is under the aspiration number five of the Agenda 2063. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the African Union Declaration on Land urge member states to develop comprehensive land policy and address specific needs of each state and build adequate human, financial, and technical capacity in accordance with the framework and guidelines of the land policy in Africa. As a continent, a lot of initiatives related to land have been implemented, although several African Union member states have progressed in developing land policy and undertaking reform we still witness several challenges in the sector, such as lack of capacity and the trained personnel in land governance institution. I would like to commend the ambassador of uh, the Republic of Germany for all the support on capacity building that is given uh, many African countries. This is uh, compounded by the advent advent of various emerging issues such as COVID-19, climate change, increasing population and urbanization, as well as ethnic and regional conflict, as I previously mentioned. All these have tremendous impact on the ability of nations to deliver land services, especially when there is competition among land users. Afri the African Union agenda 
on land is focused on ensuring that we work together to address these different land challenges. Since the last 2020, 2019 uh, conference on land uh, policy in, uh, in Africa that was held in Côte d'Ivoire, we have continued to make progress towards achieving the African Union agenda on land. The African Union Land Policy Center, with the support of uh, GIZ, has progress in establishing the network of excellence on land governance in Africa Secretariat. Through the initiative, we have witnessed a lot of capacity being built for several individuals on land governance issues. More importantly, we have also continued to support African Union member states on land policy reform, as well as the improvement of their land administration system. In addition to this, the African Union Commission, in collaboration with other partners, have been working on the development of the land governance strategy, the inclusive development of the, Af uh, the EU land governance strategy is one key initiative that is aimed at ensuring that the views of all stakeholders are integrated in the work, you know, in the work being conducted at the African Union Commission. We have also started progressing in the development of the guidelines for integrating gender in the land sector in Africa. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as we assemble today, let us remember that the overall goal of this conference is to deepen capacity for land policy development, implementation and monitoring with a specific focus on emerging issues and the African Union commitment, including in the land sector through the improved access to knowledge and information in support of evidence-based land policy making. Let me emphasize that the Conference on Land Policy in Africa is a platform for land administrators, non-state actors, private sector, and academia to share information on innovative solutions that are working to secure rights to land and improve land delivery service among our member states. It is also a platform for us to share good practices and land administration. The Conference on Land Policy for Africa is an opportunity for all of us to engage and discuss custom fit land administration solution for Africa. Let us create strong partnership in our quest to improve land governance in Africa. Distinguished delegate, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by thank, taking this opportunity to thank our esteemed partners that have accompanied us over the year in this journey. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the African Development Bank, uh, Bank and the African Land Policy Center for their tireless effort in ensuring that the conference is held successfully. I would like to extend my, my sincere appreciation to the GIZ and other cooperating partners who have supported this conference. Let me commend the government of the Republic of Rwanda for engaging on digitalization process on the land governance and land management through the initiative we just saw let me pronounce it very well, Ubutaka, Ubutaka application. Uh, uh, we at the African Union, through my department, Harbour, we are fully committed to mainstream this initiative throughout our continent. I wish you all fruitful deliberation, and I thank you for your kind attention. Merci beaucoup. Muito obrigada, Santi Sana. Muraz Kose. Thank you.
I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Honorable Sakombi Molendo, uh, the Minister for Land Affairs for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Over to you, sir. Mesdames et Messieurs, Leur Excellence, Monsieur le Ministre, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur d'Allemagne, chef de mission diplomatique, très cher envoyé de l'Union africaine et Madame la représentante pays, très cher conférencier, bonjour, je m'appelle Aimé Sakumbi Molendo, je suis le ministre national des affaires foncières de la République démocratique du Congo, et ce, depuis le 26 août 2019. Je suis venu ici non pas pour euh, intervenir, mais plutôt et surtout pour écouter, échanger et partager les expériences. En effet, lors de mon avènement à la tête du ministère des Affaires foncières de la RDC, les statistiques étaient claires. 80% des conflits pendant devant les cours et tribunaux du pays avaient comme origine le foncier. Je répète, du haut de cette tribune, 80% des affaires pendantes devant les cours et tribunaux de notre pays avaient comme origine des conflits fonciers. C'est alors que le président de la République, son Excellence, M. Félix Tshisekedi de Chilombo, m'a instruit et instruit le gouvernement d'opérer séance tenante et tous azimuts, toutes les réformes possibles pour inverser cette courbe. C'est ainsi que, très modestement, lorsque nous avons reçu l'invitation de venir participer à cette quatrième édition. C'était une aubaine pour nous, parce qu'en effet, en deux ans, nous avons réussi à rédiger une nouvelle politique foncière qui devra passer bientôt en Conseil des ministres de notre pays, après l'atelier de, de validation, après avoir consulté les 26 provinces que compte notre pays, nous avons donc décidé de venir suivre ce que le Rwanda a fait en particulier et en général toute la politique foncière africaine. Donc notre position est très claire. Nous voulons améliorer notre réseautage, nouer de nouveaux partenariats qui vont donc asseoir notre politique nationale foncière pour une meilleure gouvernance dans ce secteur. La terre doit unir et non diviser. Donc, je souhaite plein succès à cette quatrième conférence. Nous allons suivre de bout en bout tous les ateliers. Nous allons, en marge de cette conférence, établir des contacts directs parce que nous avons, nous, effectivement, beaucoup de problèmes, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure. Je peux dire ici, en échantillonnage, que nous n'avons que 15% de titres valables. Les 85 autres titres sont des titres secondaires qui ne sont pas reconnus par la loi, par l'État. Nous devons donc passer à une conversion des titres. Et là, nous avons été subjugués par ce que le Rwanda a fait, une dizaine de millions de titres numérisés, avec l'accès au titre en milieu rural. Donc, euh, je souhaite et je réitère donc euh, plein succès à cette conférence. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much uh, to the minister, uh, Honorable Sakombi Molendo, the minister for land affairs for the Democratic Republic of Congo. I would like to introduce for our closing remarks. Uh, 
from the hosts, Randa, uh, from the Ministry of Environment and uh, Lands, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Mr. Patrick Carrera, for his remarks. Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I will make it short. I know you have been sitting for a few hours now. Her Excellency Josefa Sacco, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy and Sustainable Environment of the African Union. His Excellency uh, Minister Sakumbi, in charge of land affairs of the Democratic Republic of Congo. His Excellency Ambassador Thomas for, for the Federal Republic of Germany and our co-chair actually of Environment Natural Resource Thematic Working Group in Rwanda. Uh, Mama Keita, the Director of Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Africa of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Uh, Madam Aisa, the Country Manager of the African Development Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. On behalf of the government of Rwanda, and in particular, on behalf of the Minister of Environment, I warmly welcome you all, physically and virtually, to Kigali and for, to this conference. I'm delighted to be with you this morning to officiate the opening of the Conference on Land Policy in Africa. Rwanda is incredibly privileged and honored to be hosting this conference in 2021. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the last decades on our continent, we have been focusing as governments working with partners on developing reforms in land policies. This all geared toward enhancing governance and ensuring that we provide security for the land tenure and to give services to landowners through different land reforms. But everything related to land requires strong political will, the buying of the population, and also working closely with other key stakeholders. We also need to think about the support institutions and structures that are required for ensuring an effective land policy space that impacts the continent, especially the most vulnerable. And of course, we need not only commitment at country level, but also to work at regional level to guarantee equity and transpar transparency in managing the most important resources that this continent have. We strongly believe that we need to do so with also bearing in mind the Pan-Africanism spirit. We are currently over 1.3 billion as a population in Africa. We are managing close to 30 million square kilometers. And we also have to take into account the highest population growth that we have globally. Uh, above 2%, there are even sub-regions that goes up to 3%. This conference will help us to review and reflect on the impact of land policies in land management on the continent. We will also share, as African brothers, what has been achieved in different uh, regions. We will also provide uh, a space where we can exchange experience. We take note, actually, of the request of uh, Excellency Minister from DRC that every country can share experience on the best practices and actually uh, give insight on how we manage to accommodate or address the challenges that we have been having in terms of land management. But I would like to draw your attention on the key challenges that we have and that requires that we innovate more. One is the climate change effect which is affecting, uh, which is leading actually to an, a tremendous uh, risk of 
de deforestation and land degradation. We also have the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, which actually almost uh, reduced the economic growth uh, on, at continent level. It is important, therefore, that we need to think about the new innovation for delivering land reform and land services to our citizens. There are different countries that have started developing innovations, including the use of the digital world, the technologies, the online platforms, uh, and complete reform in policies. This experience should not be lost today, but we all need to have a share, contribute, and have a clear picture on how we can overcome these challenges at continental level. In Rwanda, we are pleased to share that effective land administration has, supposed, has, has supported the increase of agricultural production, promoted investment on land, it boosted also the market of uh, land-related services while also contributing to poverty reduction in general. The issue of land-related conflict is almost common to all African countries. But we can share that with digitization and improving land-related policies, we have managed to almost uh, uh, digitize and provide uh, issue around over 10 million land titles. We are currently undergoing a new phase of using blockchain technology to, re to uh, ease the way of providing the land related transactions. Actually, we intend that if every everything goes well, we will reduce the number of days it takes to provide the transaction to seven days up to one working day. But of course, it, we can't implement the land reform if it is not locally driven, and in most cases, if not of all implemented by the local community. Ownership is very key between the government and public to assess the needs for land reform and work together for its success. When demand of land reform comes from within, we have seen that the chances of successful implementation is naturally higher. As a country, we are steadily building our capacities in the land administration field, but we still also have a long way to get to where we want to be. And this definitely requires that we work together with all the partners. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference has a specific theme of land governance for safeguarding art, culture, heritage towards the Africa that we want. It is aligned with our country commitment to preserve our own history, legacy, and tradition through ensuring that our creative aspects remain in the forefront of our endeavors. This is because that Rwanda family believe that it is important to uphold tradition and its collective spirit that brings us together. On behalf of the government and on my own behalf, I would like to express special gratitude to the African Union, to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, to the African Development Bank, and for the Germany government for supporting Rwanda to host this important conference. We also want to appreciate the effort of the organizing committee, both locally and on Africa level, to have actually coordinated us up to this day. Furthermore, we want to appreciate that this conference will also talk different thematic areas beyond land, including climate change, water resources management, and how we can draw positive impacts in adaptation and mitigation to our climate change uh, risk and threats. I expect this conference to be a platform also for academia,
policymakers, civil society here present, to share the best practices, research findings, and help us to identify investment opportunities in land policy development and land management in Africa. I take this opportunity to thank you all for your time allocated to this conference, either physically or those who are joining us virtually. And I wish you fruitful discussion during these four days, but also encourage visitors from abroad to visit Rwanda. Land is our common heritage, and we need to continue working jointly to safeguard it for the present and future generation. I thank you and de declare this conference officially open on behalf of the government of Rwanda. Thank you. I want to thank our speakers this morning, uh, the ambassadors, uh, your excellencies, uh, ministers, and the permanent secretaries. And I want to thank you for being such a great audience, uh, very participatory, for, and for ensuring that we don't have any feedback. The event was being broadcast live on CNBC Africa. So once again, I also want to thank the CUBE team uh, I want to thank the team from the Land Policy Africa as well. I want to thank UNECA, African Union Commission, uh, the Rwanda government, RCB, uh, Radisson Blue and KCC for this brilliant and uh, for ensuring that day one of four starts off this well. Mm -hmm.